Jill, I mean, for all of us hearing his voice on that footage was just sheer elation. But for you, that must have been wrapped with so much pride. Yes. And, and delight that he, yeah. got, he got there, yes. Yeah. So when did you know that he was going out there? I had a phone call from my other son uh, that he was on the quarter to ten plane to Thailand. Yeah. So this is Mark, your uh, other son, yes. isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, and so has he been able to keep in contact while there he's been There have been various emails going backwards and forwards saying, don't worry, I'm OK, yeah. and things like that. Because you must worry. I mean, as a mum, I mean, he's yes. still your, your boy. Yes. And, he, I mean, all throughout his career, because he's been an adventurous man, he's always been into stuff like this. Well, he... he seems to have done, with hindsight, quite a lot of extreme sports. Yeah. Um, cycling, running. He did the Spartathlon last year in Greece. Um, he cycled from John of Groats to Land's End, all sorts of things. Well, then, uh, then you've got his, uh, you've got John and his diving partner uh, Rick Stanton. They set a world record for the greatest depth achieved in a British yes. cave. Uh, they di uh, dived 76 meters in Somerset. 2010, uh, the both of them and two other divers set a world record for the longest cave penetration dive, reaching an incredible 8,800 meters. This was in a, a cave system in Spain. Um, but did you know? how good he was. No. You, you just take it all in and, and he's, he's with me when he's with me and when he's doing what he's doing, he's, he's doing it for himself. And you didn't know the sort of stuff that he was capable of? Not he, really, he... no, no. Well, he showed uh, interest in caving from a very early age. And, David, you know all about this because his love of caving started when he was in the Scouts. Yes, yes, I think the first cave that John entered was in Brecon Beacons called the Chartist Cave. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd only come across it by chance, if you like, and more or less had to pull him out of there right. to stop him getting any deeper. But also down in Brecon, um, he with three other friends, also in the Scouts, went independently and they, when they were in, their, in the cave, they'd taken a car and their car was broken into. Fortunately, the police with surveillance in it at the time and their camping equipment was all stolen. And the police wanted to keep it as evidence in court, but they wouldn't let them because they needed a camp in it. They needed it but, to carry uh, on camping, yeah. And so, uh, so what, sort of, what sort of guy is he? He's very, he's very modest, extremely modest. Um, but as Jones has said, he was always into sports. I never knew him uh, into the normal sports like football or cricket, none, none of the those sort of things, but hiking, camping, um, whether it was uh, swimming or um, climbing, yeah. mm. walking, all of the extreme sports he loved. How do you think he's going to feel, Jill? Because, you know, you both said he's a very modest man, very, very quiet, sort of just gets on with the job at hand. To suddenly now have the, the world's media, anybody that has been following this story, have this interest in in him, what happened, how did he feel about it? I mean, there's talk, people are saying, you know, this is going to be an incredible book, this is going to be an incredible movie. How do you think he'll be feeling about that? I really don't know. I yeah. really don't know. And John has said himself, this is an environment that doesn't suffer fools. It does not. You can, I'm sure you can't, you can't take any risk whatsoever. No. And John's not the type of person to take any risk. No. He and Rick, I suspect, started cave diving as a hobby. Yeah. Mm. But now, through their experience, they're rated as almost the best in the world. Yeah. But he would not take any risk whatsoever. Everything would be double-checked yeah. to make sure that not only he, yeah. but whoever he was attempting to rescue was safe. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, there are uh, there are lots of people you hear of the New Year's Honours list and the, the, you know, the summertime one who get mm. their knighthoods and their OBEs and various things. Mm. And um, uh, you know, often there are people you think, oh, now that was really well deserved. Yeah. That's someone who's really earned their knighthood. How would he feel if he was honoured in some way? It's very hard to take it all in. I mean, this week has just swept me off my feet. I don't know where I am. I'm <laughs> gone. You know, it's. Uh, yeah, I, I hope he does enjoy any publicity he gets. Yeah. Because well, he's he a shy guy, we know that. Enjoys, he enjoys caving and he does deserve it. Well, he it, does well, it, deserve it. And it's the cave diving that he enjoys and cave exploration, yeah. I think, is uh, something that 
not too many people do. Mm. And uh, as I believe somebody's already said, there are more people walked on the moon mm. than in some of the caves yeah. in, of which John and Rick, don't forget, yeah, no, they absolutely. are. No, no, absolutely. We uh, and uh, he's trod on ground that other people have never trodden on in caves and cave dives. Well, tell him when he comes home, if you'd like a cup of tea, and we make a good cup of tea here, we'd love to, we'd love to meet him. Yeah, we um, would. And, uh, and also, even though I know he shies away from publicity, if he doesn't want to well, do that, probably, just tell him we said uh, we think he's amazing. You could yeah. probably well, tempt him with a, a packet of chocolate biscuits. Oh, right, tell him. done, That's done, it. done, done. <laughs> I've always got those in my dressing room, don't you worry about Sorted. that. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. So Thank nice to meet much. you both. You're very well. <laughs> Thank you.